As we turn our attention now over to the grain markets, the Fed did as expected earlier this week. In a move to tamp inflation, the Federal Reserve raised its key interest rate. Shortly after that announcement, we had the opportunity to catch up with Darren Newsom of Darren Newsom Analysis. I asked Darren about that move and how it would ultimately affect the consumer. Here to discuss the markets now is Darren Newsom. Darren, it's always great to have Market Journal. Thanks for coming back. Thanks for having me on again, Bryce. Well, the big news as you and I have this conversation today has to do with interest rates. What can you tell our viewers about what came out this week? Yeah, the, the Federal Reserve uh, bumped the Fed funds rate by another uh, 75 basis points. So putting it in that 1.5 to 1.75 percent. You know, what I like about what, how Chairman and Fowl and uh, Chairman Powell and, and the rest of his, uh, the rest of the guys, uh, the rest of the group there uh, at the U.S. Federal Reserve, what they're doing is they get ahead of this. They, you know, basically uh, this has been announced. This has been talked about before the actual announcement comes out. So, you know, we're not throwing the markets into chaos. We're not, you know, we're not trying to see how much havoc can be created. It's just, you know, the U.S. Federal Reserve is trying to manage monetary policy, and, and that's all it really is. That's, that's what they're supposed to do, and that's what it boils down to. So, you know, we, we saw the expected 75 basis point increase. Now we'll see how the markets react longer term. I don't think it's going to change anything. We haven't, we haven't really we haven't made any adjustments to supply and demand. Uh, you know, the only other thing that really came out this week uh, was retail sales cracked for the first time. We saw a little bit of a decrease. So, you know, this could be the first sign that we are reaching that consumer tipping point, that pain point where they actually do stop uh, buying quite as much with inflation. But as far as the interest rate goes, needed. It's been needed. Uh, I'm, I'm not really one of those who's going to say we don't need to be making moves. I think we should have been making moves before. Uh, and so, you know, good, good move on this uh, this week. And we'll see how many more we have in the future. Well, Darren, let's jump into the grain market now, starting with corn. What are you seeing over in that market right now? The biggest thing in the corn market to me is the strength of old crop basis. Uh, as far as you know, looking at the bar chart national corn basis index, it's gone to about three and a half cents over July. So we're in overs for the first time in the 2021-22 marketing year. What this tells me is we have an incredibly tight real supply and demand situation, not the imaginary ones, but the real supply and demand situation is at or near record tight levels. We've got merchandisers really pushing to try to find supplies to meet all three categories of demand, which are feed, ethanol, and exports. While we could start to see those slow down a bit uh, here over the course of the summer right now, they're still red hot, still a lot of demand, and it's a real fight to try to find supply. So the biggest thing in the corn market to me continues to be basis, and we'll see how long that lasts. Is that a different story at all when it comes to soybeans? Uh, a, a bit different story here you know, in the soybean market, we are facing a similar a situation similar to I believe it was what we saw in 2012, 2013, where we're basically just out of soybeans. And so demand could start to be falling off as, as we speak. You know, Wednesday morning, we saw the first announcement of, of a small cancellation by unknown destinations, something like 3.7 million bushels. I think this is something that we're going to have to get used to. I think we're going to see more of this. I think it's going to be very difficult for merchandisers to find the soybeans to meet the demand that we've already got on the books. So I think we are going to see some cancellations, particularly if we're going to continue to crush at the pace we have been. To that point, you say there's not enough soybeans to meet the demand right now. I think the producer would be asking, so why aren't prices going even higher than what we see right now? Your thoughts, Darren? Well, yeah, we, we, we've factored this in. I mean, if we look at if we look at the national average cash prices, uh, May saw us close, I think, at the second highest uh, national average cash price ever on record. And, and we haven't fallen off that far here in, uh, in June. So the pressure that we've been seeing of late is a lot of non-commercial selling in the market. Remember, every market's made up of two sides, non-commercial and commercial. Commercials are still bullish. It's still bullish fundamentals. But the non-commercial side, you know, we look at what's happening with the U.S. stock indexes. There's a lot of concern in the investment uh, community as a whole. And so what we're seeing is some of that, some of that spillover into commodities, at least some of the commodities, one of them being soybeans, where we've got some, some long liquidation of the July contract. They know they're going to probably roll out and start buying the November at some point. The August and September are useless contracts. So at some point, they're going to, they're going to slip out there and they're going to start buying some November uh, based on long-term fundamentals. We just haven't seen it yet because there's been no real hurry to get it done. Mm -hmm. 
So we've covered corn, covered soybeans. When it comes to wheat, the winter wheat coming out uh, now in the state of Kansas. Talk with you before we hit the record button. Uh, seeing those daily updates out of the state of Kansas, and it sounds like, as expected, not a great crop, right? No, it, it, it's going to be a poor crop this year. We've been able to see that in the spreads, basically going back to late last fall, early winter. We, we knew the crop wasn't going to be very good. And as the combines continue to roll, last report I saw was they were, they were combines were already up into the central part of the state. You know, you've got yields anywhere from, you know, low teens to, you know, upper 50s uh, is what's running right now. The interesting thing to me, though, and again, this is not a surprise, but given the drought, we're seeing protein uh, protein levels going up in the crop. Again, that tends to happen when we've got a drought, and I can't help but uh, I can't help but think that the hard red spring merchandisers, those up across the northern plains, are going to be getting pretty excited about that. They're going to be looking to buy some of that hard red winter with the higher protein levels because there's not going to be much high protein hard red spring this year. You know, some in North Dakota, some of the northern plains did not get planted. So they're going to be searching for some of that high protein wheat, obviously going to be interested in some of the hard red winter bushels coming in this harvest. You mentioned uh, that that D word drought that we've we've seen impacting, obviously, the, the winter wheat. As we look at this grain trade, it seems like weather is obviously that big uncertainty that nobody has a crystal ball and can tell us what's going to happen with. At their at their core, these markets, uh, you know, production markets, ag production, however, however, however far you want to take that out, uh, they're, they're just weather derivatives. And so basically the bottom line it almost always turns out to be weather. And, you know, as we as we head into summer here, uh, you know, there's really We've got a sharp break about the about the Missouri River, where everything west is in some sort of drought. Everything east is okay to actually showing a surplus uh, soil moisture. The big question right now has been Northwest Iowa, and you know here this week uh, that, that area did see some pretty good rains. So there's not a lot of concern, at least at this point, east of the uh, east of the Missouri. But we'll see how the summer plays out because that's that's what everyone's going to watch. I mean, we have to have big crops this year to start to rebuild these supplies. And if we don't get them, if we get some weather scares, these markets are going to stay volatile. All right, Darren, the final word is yours this week. What else do you want to add or any risk management advice you'd like to pass along? These are profitable levels and it doesn't matter what market that we're talking about. You know, if we can get some on the books, remove, you know, just offset some of that volatility that we're looking for this summer, it's not a bad thing. And am I wanting to sell absolutely everything? No. But I mean, if we continue to put some on the books at these levels, it's going to be profitable. It's going to be a good sale. No matter what happens in the markets, it's going to be a good sale. So we need to be looking for those opportunities, not just for 2022, but also for 2023.